final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 12205 in the name of Bruce Crawford on Clean Up Scotland. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. I'd invite those members who wish to speak in this debate to press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. And I now call on Bruce Crawford. Mr Crawford, if you are ready, uh, you have seven minutes to open the debate, please. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, can I begin by sincerely thanking all of the colleagues who signed the motion, allowing me to hold this important members' debate this evening? Can I also warmly thank those who are either in the chamber this evening to take part in the debate or are here to simply listen to proceedings? President Officer, the reason I wanted to lead this debate this evening is because, like many others in this chamber and out with, I care passionately and have a deep pride in our country. I despair when I see our land tarnished by those who litter, spit their chewing gum on the street, allow dog fouling or fly tipping, whether that's through carelessness or illegal behaviour. As the briefing from Keep Scotland Beautiful sent to all MSPs tells us, the statistics on these matters are alarming. 250 million easily visible items of litter are dropped in Scotland every year. Every day, Scottish smokers throw away two million cigarette butts. There are 170 incidents of fly tipping every day. 80% of gum is not put in the bin, and that costs about £18 per square foot to remove. And goodness knows how many incidents of dog fouling. And it's because of statistics like these and what we can see from the evidence of our own eyes that we should so enthusiastically support Keep Scotland Beautiful's Clean Up Scotland campaign. It is a fantastic mass engagement campaign which is working hard to make Scotland the cleanest country in Europe. Who could not sign up enthusiastically to such a vision? And I know that across the chamber that we all agree that Scotland is one of the most beautiful countries in the world. We have a rich mix of incredible rural beauty, world-class cities and vibrant urban developments. And in order to protect and enhance our country's natural advantages, it is vital to support campaigns like this. Now, the Clean Up Scotland campaign works across all 32 local authorities and has at its heart the aim to try and change people's attitudes and therefore their long-term behaviour towards litter. All of Scotland's 32 local authorities, as you might expect, have thrown their weight behind the campaign, as to have organisations such as Visit Scotland, Historic Scotland, BT, Scottish Water, SSE and the Scottish Government are also currently supporters of the campaign. The campaign also has substantial business support, building up an impressive coalition of the willing, motivating more than 80 local, national and global brands to invest in the campaign messages. These include McDonald's, who have signed the Clean Up Scotland pay pledge, supported by all stores and 13 franchisees who organise cleanups, Bid Scotland, Greggs and Coca-Cola. The Clean Up Scotland campaign is leading community clean-up activities across the country to tackle carelessness and illegal behaviour of those individuals who damage our quality of life and tarnish the country's image. The campaign has seen 500,000 voluntary clean-up actions, picking up 5,000 tonnes of litter. That's quite two quite impressive sets of statistics for different reasons, obviously. Keep Scotland Beautiful rightly want to change long-term behaviour by making dropping litter as socially unacceptable as drink driving is today. Of course, the problem is not simply just a visual one. There are social, health and financial consequences as well as environmental considerations. The current cost of dealing with the problem of litter in Scotland alone is over £1 million per week. Socially, there is a proven link between environmental incivilities and the fear of crime. People feel safer in cleaner communities. Our health is also affected, with higher levels of depression, illness and medical interventions among people who live in areas that are not clean. Finally, there are severe financial consequences too for the householder, directly in their pocket, their council tax. Uh, big chunks of that has to go and be spent 
on issues such as this, and landowners spending significant sums of money clearing mess from their own land. Now, and those of you who know me well know that tourism is something I care passionately about. It's an industry which is worth over £4 billion a year to Scotland. Our scenery and landscapes is one of the top reasons that people give for visiting Scotland. First impressions that people have when they visit our country are hugely important. Uh, people visiting Scotland don't want to see streets full of litter, walls covered in unsightly graffiti, or fly tipping along our, the side of our country roads. Clean Up Scotland is helping to make sure that our villages, towns and cities are kept as clean as possible so that people can enjoy what Scotland has to offer without having to worry about an unclean environment around them. And one of the ways that Clean Up Scotland goes about that is through the Hero of a Month Award, which recognises a volunteer's outstanding contribution to cleaning up Scotland. In my own constituency of Stirling, Donald Holmes won the award in December 2014. Donald was an award, awarded Hero of the Month for his outstanding individual efforts to collect and recycle litter around the village of Bacliwe. Stirling Council nominated Donald, who's to date collected around 90 bags of rubbish and is now starting to recycle the collected waste. People like Donald are inspirational. His work will hopefully encourage others to work in the same quiet, efficient matter, manner and make a difference to the local and therefore national environment. Healers like Donald keep Scotland beautiful and all those involved with Clean Up Scotland do a job which often goes unnoticed. The most recent initiative from Clean Up Scotland in 2015 will be the Two Minute Clean Up, which will campaign under the hashtag Two Minute Clean Up for all us Twitter users. The campaign aims to encourage those who may not have time to participate properly in a longer clean up. Instead, Clean Up Scotland are providing people with bespoke recycling bags, which they can cleanly and easily use to collect litter for two minutes a day. When we see litter on the streets, we rightly complain about it. However, when we don't, and instead we see clean streets, we usually think nothing of it, actually. That's due to the hard work of organisations like Scotland's councils, Keep Scotland Beautiful, and their Clean Up Scotland campaign. I applaud them for helping to keep Scotland and make it beautiful. Thank you very much. You. Excellent. <clears throat> and we now move to the open debate, and I call on Christine Graham to be followed by Jackie Bailey. Four minutes or thereby, please. Uh, thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. I congratulate Bruce Crawford on securing this debate and on Keep Scotland Beautiful campaign because the issue of public dropping litter is one of my bugbears. I heard, incidentally, of queue jumpers in the supermarket or motorists who can see that lane ahead is blocked but expect to nudge in when they've reached the bollards. So that makes it pretty high as a bugbear. Whether it's school children dropping the baked potato or pizza box the parent letting their child drop lollipop wrappers or worse, doing it themselves in front of their children. The motorist gaily rolling down the window and brazenly emptying the ashtray, I see red. Logoed carrier bags waving at me from the trees, stuck on fences. The debris, the detritus on our shores, I would wish we could name and shame big time the culprits. I went on a trip to Bruges some years ago and settled myself in the square to people watch as I quaffed a light lager to wash down some muscles. The square is quaint and apart from the horse-drawn tourist carriages, and by the way, the horses have a special chute attachment to catch their detritus, it's a people place. But there was something very different about the scene apart from the above and I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Then I realized there was not one single piece, nay, even a speck of litter. Could any of us say the same for any square or main street in our constituencies? Some even think it macho, a macho gesture to throw litter. No wonder we call them litter louts. Visually, it is vandalism with a capital V. It also costs in money and manpower. Midlothian Council spends approximately £850,000 a year on litter removal and street sweeping. It has alone 250 instances of fly tipping from the single item, that ubiquitous mattress or the saggy bottom sofa, to tipping on an industrial scale. It costs in animal welfare. 
Discarded fishing tackle causes misery for swans, plastic bags choke livestock. Fish in our seas have their very DNA altered by our disposal of chemical waste. For farmers, additionally to the issue of livestock harm, there is the substantial issue of fly tipping, which affects farmers across the borders of Midlothian. It is estimated that some one third of farms are affected. And I may be wrong in this, Cabinet Secretary, but I understand it is the landowner who is responsible for the cost of the removal. I have many faults, Deputy Presiding Officer, as you know, but being guilty of littering is not one. We have laws, of course, but many are unaware of them. And who always has the confidence to confront the culprit? Until society views littering with the same abhorrence and distaste as it does, say, spitting in public, I'm afraid we'll never see the cleanliness of Bruges here. To put it succinctly, if I were a guest on the television programme Room 101, I would advocate depositing litter, all litter. There, Deputy Presiding Officer, I've got that off my chest, but welcome the continuing work of Keith Scotland Beautiful and hope, though I have to say with this caveat, not a great deal of optimism that I need not rant on this issue again. Again, I congratulate Bruce Crawford on bringing forward this debate. Excellent. <clears throat> I now call on Jackie Bailey to be followed by Graham Day. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Can I too join in congratulating Bruce Crawford on securing debating time and indeed for the content of his contribution. Um, they do say that timing is everything in politics, so we should perhaps note the reception for Keep Scotland Beautiful in the garden lobby at six o'clock um, and welcome the Clean Up Scotland champions from all across the country to Parliament this evening and their efforts should indeed be applauded. There is no doubt we live in a beautiful country. I am proud um, to have Scotland's first national park in my constituency, shared in part with Bruce Crawford. Um, Loch Lomond is, of course, iconic and draws visitors from home as well as abroad. We have the most amazing landscapes, dramatic coastlines, and just occasionally nice weather to go with it. But, of course, the blot on our landscape is litter. The stats do bear repeating because I didn't realise the scale of the problem. You know, the 250 million visible items every year. And when you actually think about, as you're driving along, looking at the grass verges, looking at the hedges, you actually begin to understand the scale of the problem we face. I couldn't believe that there were 170 incidents of fly tipping every day. I suspect that is the tip of the iceberg. That's only what we know about. And it isn't just the grass verges and the hedges, it's the city streets that are littered with whether it's detritus from food or, or cigarettes or indeed anything like that. Um, I was struck by the example that Christine Graham gave of Bruges. I actually grew up in Hong Kong. Um, we ran litter campaigns. Um, there weren't so many grass verges there, but we, we actually had a purple dragon called Lop Sup Chung. Um, and as a child, I was most fearful of this purple dragon appearing. But I'll tell you, the streets in Hong Kong are absolutely spotless. And there is maybe something we can learn from what goes on there. Indeed. Christine Sometimes in this chamber, we could do with that dragon back to handle you. <laughs> Well, I, I would suggest that that's the role of the presiding officer, not that I'm suggesting that he is a purple dragon. But, you know, um, when, you consider, when you consider the culture that, that we seem to have of just drop it behind you, leave it behind, um, throw it out of the car window, um, it is perhaps not astonishing that we have the scale of the problem we do. Um, so keep Scotland beautiful and the Clean Up Scotland campaign are absolutely vital. The fact that they've encouraged an army of volunteers, and yes, that includes many of us, um, to undertake the scale of voluntary activity, the 300 cleanups every month, the picking up thousands of litter, is just fantastic. I know because I've participated, and I have to confess um, that it's not just about doing something that's useful for the environment. It's great exercise, and you absolutely switch off from the, the kind of myriad things we have going on in our heads. So, you know, I was at Leavengrove Park. I was at the beach at Dumbarton. Yes, we have one. I was at Dumbarton Castle on the banks of the Clyde. There have been litter picks in Helensborough. There is a litter pick in Luss on the banks of Loch Lomond on the 7th of March. I invite you all along to participate. It will be fun. Um, but I commend the Keep Scotland Beautiful campaign, not just, not just for the 
the mass engagement that they've encouraged, but because they've brought together communities, they've brought together local authorities, the public sector, the third sector, businesses, they've had a great job in actually putting everybody together to take coordinated action. And as we've heard from Bruce, 80 local, national and global brands, you know, McDonald's, Greggs, William Tracy, Wrigley's, Coca-Cola Enterprises, all recognizing that we need to do more. And it isn't just the visual impact of what is known as environmental incivility. The issue is a lessening of civic pride, a negative impact on wildlife, both on land and marine areas, negative health and social justice outcomes. And presiding officer, I'm conscious of time, but let me mention an impact on farms in my area. Because I was approached by the National Farmers Union of Scotland. They reported dog fouling in fields having huge impact on the well-being of livestock, with cattle miscarrying on a regular basis. And I understand that perhaps there is a consultation, if I'm right, being undertaken, but I would be very pleased to hear from the Cabinet Secretary about what more can be done to prevent this in future, because it is an increasing problem and we do need to help. Education presiding officers has a hugely important role to play in encouraging the next generation not to litter. I know locally that eco schools, part of what Keep Scotland um, Beautiful do, have made a huge impact. And education is about changing attitudes and behaviour. We need to make it socially unacceptable to drop litter. Our strategy needs to be about ensuring that people take personal responsibility, they're proactive about prevention, that enforcement action is there so that those who litter are fined. And finally, presiding officer, not that you are a purple dragon, can I congratulate Keep Scotland Beautiful on their work and commend all the volunteers and partners across Scotland for their involvement. Thank you. Many thanks. <clears throat> now call on Graham Day to be followed by Jamie McGregor. Uh, thank you. Uh, one of the key themes to emerge from the work done by the Rural Affairs, Climate Change and Environment Committee of this Parliament in relation to tackling climate change is the critical need to bring about behavioural change. We will not respond to the uh, challenges posed by global warming. We do not take drastic action to tackle our emissions, and we will only successfully tackle emissions if, as a society and individuals, we alter our behaviours. Presiding officer, in many respects, the same essentially applies to addressing the scandal of littering, a subject I know you take a personal interest in. As the Scottish Government's little strategy towards a litter-free Scotland has, almost as its mission statement, we need to encourage individuals to take personal responsibility to make sure that waste does not pollute the environment in the first place. It truly is a national disgrace that a country as beautiful as Scotland is blighted by littering to the extent it is. The fact it costs an estimated £78 million annually to clean up litter gives us an idea of the scale of the issue. That figure ultimately borne by the we taxpayers, of course, also hammers home the price of behaving in what is a socially unacceptable way. But it ju does just seem that as, just as the public are beginning to embrace recycling, so they are getting on board and tackling the littering issue. So let me congratulate my colleague Bruce Crawford on bringing forward this motion for debate and highlighting the vehicle for positive behavioural change that KSB's Clean Up Scotland campaign is. The campaign has attracted a coalition of support from the business community and local authorities. And I want to return to the local authority issue in a second. But more than anything, it's buy-in from individuals and local groups, which ultimately will determine the success or otherwise of the campaign. Because if the ambition to have one million people taking action with the demonstrable impact that will have on our environment is realised, then we will find ourselves in a far better place. However, let's also recognise the leadership role that our councils must have and are fulfilling. In the local authority area which I represent, a Clean Up Angus campaign is being supported by the Pride in Place group of the Council. Funding received from Zero Waste Scotland is being deployed in two innovative litter projects. Firstly, Prevent Litter and Pick Up 3 campaign, which was launched last, uh, earlier this month at the West Links area in Arbro. It aims to reduce incidences of littering between Arbro and East Haven by encouraging all users, that's local residents, visitors, etc., to stop littering and to pick up any three items of litter they see and place them in a nearby litter or recycling bin. Secondly, the Forfar Academy Litter Prevention Scheme, which includes adoption of a uh, school litter charter and school pupils and staff and local businesses heavily involved in developing the campaign. That followed a survey of school pupils which found 84% felt the area around the campus was moderately to heavily littered and one in three admitted to littering themselves in the preceding month. We're also seeing branding of new litter bins with the Clean Up Angus logo. The campaign is being promoted via presentations at primary and high schools. Free equipment and collection of waste being offered to groups. 
uh, and a litter of awareness short film is currently being produced linked into the Queen Up Angus campaign. But beyond the work instigated by the Council, we are also seeing the individuals and communities stepping up to the mark. And, President Officer, I would like to highlight uh, some examples of this. Scott Smith, a cerebral palsy sufferer from Carmoustie, was named Queen Up Scotland's first ever Ditch the Dirt hero in September 2013. Um, uh, Scott was involved in, in taking the lead in working with primary school pupils at Burnside School and the Carnoustie Canine Capers Group in addressing dog dirt at one of the, the towns Pitskelly, uh, at Towns Pitskelly Park. It is worth noting in passing that 64 per cent of the litter picks registered with Queen Up Scotland record instances of dog fouling. Chris Auchinleck of the Monifeith Eco Force was named Hero of the Month that same month for work in improving the appearance and experience of that town. And from Forth for Whitehill's primary school pupil Sophie Ann Robson was awarded the Clean Up Hero Award in 2013 for her campaigning work on dog fouling. All three are due to attend Bruce Crawford's event in the Parliament, uh, which follows this debate. All three have demonstrated the mantra of this campaign, demonstrating civic responsibility, taking pride in where they live, work and spend their leisure time. And we, all of us, show we must follow that lead. Presiding officer. Many thanks. I now call on Jamie McGregor to be followed by Chip Brody. Um, thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. I too congratulate Bruce Crawford on securing this important debate. And I want to uh, wish him and others, uh, I want to recognise the good work of Keep Scotland Beautiful and its Clean Up Scotland campaign. Litter in our environment can seriously impact on our quality of life, and the presence of litter sends out an incredibly bad message to visitors and tourists many of whom are attracted to our shores by what they expect to be our pristine natural environment and well-kept villages, towns and cities. And the costs of remedying litter fall on the hard-pressed taxpayers. And the motion is right to highlight the commendable efforts of those who volunteer to cl help clean up their communities, including many thousands of residents in my region and the Highlands and Islands. And I pay tribute to all those constituents who give up their own time to undertake these activities from Kintyre to Shetland. And I would highlight the example of Sandra McMillan from Beachwatch Butte, who does sterling work on Butte to bring local people and visitors to the island together to remove litter from the coastline and the beach of Butte. She is a Clean Up Scotland hero, and I'm delighted she has won a number of small litter grants to assist her efforts. Tackling litter on our beaches and coastlines is a massive challenge, Sam's did a survey in 2010 and collected more than 53,000 pieces of litter from a sample of 22 kilometres of Scottish beaches. That's more than one item for every step trod. Litter can also do such harm to our wild birds and animals, and of course, it can be lethal to farmers' livestock. The motion refers also to the role of the business community, and I'm pleased that Coca-Cola Enterprise is one of a number of businesses which readily accepts the part they can play in the clean-up of their products packaging. It's encouraging that Coca-Cola Enterprise is helping to fund and support KSB, allowing them to back up local groups who wish to tackle the scourge of litter in their communities. Things do go better with Coke. Uh, we also need to see the behaviour change to which Bruce Crawford referred, and education is the key in this respect. I support the efforts to engage primary and secondary school children about the impact of litter on their own communities. Education can help alter adult behaviour as well. Ash Scotland's briefing for today said that almost 50% of our streets have some form of tobacco-related litter, including cigarette butts, matches and packaging, and that this rises to 70% in urban areas. Many smokers think butts will biodegrade, but they don't. And not only that, but discarded butts end up can leak harmful toxins, toxins into our water systems that can harm marine life and the environment. So we need to get the message out that tobacco-related littering is unacceptable, as indeed all types of littering is. Um, Highland Council in my region is to be congratulated on its Stub It and Bin It campaign, which it la launched last year. Now, I sometimes wish that some local councils would be more generous in aiding litter collection by volunteers. I've been chairman of the Lockhaw Improvement Association in Argyle since 1992. During that time, we've organised many clean-ups by volunteers, and our wardens pick up bags of rubbish off the Lockshaw every week. 
but Argyll and Biogas, the association has to pay £380 each for the large bins, of which we have several, and we have to pay hundreds of pounds for black bags, and we are then charged um, £2,300 for uplifting them. Now, the association uh, is doing a good job and feels it is performing a valuable voluntary service by running a litter collection you know, locally. And we feel we should be helped by the council rather than charged for it. Uh, and I'd like to know what the minister's opinion is on that. But to conclude, presiding officer, the Scottish Conservatives are happy to give our backing to Bruce Crawford's motion, which is rightly has cross-party support, and we recognise the continuing efforts of um, Keep Scotland Beautiful and all the volunteers throughout the country and the excellent work being undertaken, while also acknowledging the real challenges we face to change behaviour of some people and move towards a situation where littering is simply socially and culturally totally unacceptable. Thanks. And thank you. I now call on Jake Brodie, after which we'll move to the closing speech from the Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, uh, <coughs> Presiding Officer. I too welcome uh, Bruce Crawford's initiative in uh, bringing this debate forward today, to today. I also share his passions for tourism and for having a litter-free uh, country. I also welcome the efforts of uh, Keep Scotland Beautiful and the general community in Scotland in efforts and campaigns uh, to clean up individual communities across Scotland. Presiding officer, when I first entered this parliament uh, in 2011, I was minded uh, to aim to bring in a private member's bill on litter. I withdrew, withdrew that intent on the commitment of the government to bring in extended proposals to deal with the issue. And as the motion points out, some steps have been clearly taken, particularly via the Clean Up Scotland campaign. That was and is good news and, and effective. However, Mr Crawford's motion uh, rightly points out the scale of the problem remaining and that significant further progress requires to be made uh, on levels of litter. Yes, that requires significant uh, behavioural change, but it also uh, requires further legislation, I believe, to support our objectives. And I note and welcome the significant changes, uh, the increases made in the Fixed Penalties Order 2013-2013, increasing penalties in littering, fly tipping, etc. That seems to have had uh, some effect, but we need more. As has been said, littering is a blight on Scotland, our country. This country is a beautiful country. But litter is one of the few factors, in some cases a major factor, not just on the beauty of Scotland, but also on its economy. We do not want litter to be a bad experience for our tourists or indeed our citizens. £60 million of public money spent on tackling litter and fly tipping each year could be spent on other services. One tonne of litter represents 20,000 items which spread nose to tail extends for 12 and a half miles. And nowhere is this more obvious than in our town centres. Uh, oh, I wish that here were, uh, where near a town surpasses was known for honest men and bonny lasses and not in some cases for the litter on its streets. So let me dwell, presiding officer, on two suggestions to add to the debate on litter, uh, particularly in our town centre areas. The dropping or spitting out of chewing gum is an offence under section 87 of the Environmental Protection Act, yet the pavements and the streets of our town centre still suffer from a chewing gum a, a pox. That has to be eliminated, and I a, repeat my previous suggestions in the absence of the obvious ab uh, absence of the application of penalties that the local sale of non-biodegradable chewing gum attract a levy of, let's say, an additional 10 pence a pack which will be attributed to local authorities to allow them to clean up the chewing gum mess. The second suggestion is to encourage the creation of a social enterprise in each locality. Each enterprise, and I've had discussions on this and proposals on this locally, each enterprise to use rickshaws with bins aboard to ensure that litter louts get the message and have the opportunity to deposit their litter appropriately. 
each rickshaw rider to have a helmet-bearing webcam to record and immediately find those who continue to drop their litter in the streets. Funding, I'm very serious, funding could come from the £60 million we currently spend on tackling litter. Singapore we may never be, but I believe we can still make even greater strides. Presiding officer, certainly we have done well, and I congratulate Keep Scotland Beautiful, uh, and we have made progress, but a lot more needs to be done. Thank you. Many thanks. I now call on the Cabinet Secretary, Richard Lockhead, to close the debate on behalf of the Government. Cabinet Secretary, you have seven minutes or thereby, please. Thank you, and of course, I'd like to start by congratulating Bruce Crawford and thank him for raising this important issue in Parliament today, and of course, to all members for their contributions. I think we can hear that many members have been angered by the scale of littering in Scotland, and will betide any litter lout that comes across Christine Graham in particular, uh, who understandably, understandably uh, is very angered by what we sometimes see in our communities and across Scotland's uh, beautiful landscapes. And likewise, I also look forward to welcoming many people involved in this issue from across Scotland at the, the reception that's being hosted after this debate. Clearly, we all do agree that litter is a disgusting blight, blight on our communities and our coasts as well. And of course, it tarnishes our beautiful landscapes and harms public health, as many people have mentioned, and of course, our wildlife. And in many cases, where there's particularly extreme examples of litter, it can drag down the mor morale of some of Scotland's communities uh, as well. So we all, of course, agree this is a problem that absolutely must be addressed. Many of you will um, identify with some of the points I'm going to say, and of course I'll do my best to reflect on some of the points that were made by members uh, in the chamber. First and foremost, of course, is that there are many different people responsible for dealing with this issue, and our local authorities, of course, must be at the forefront of the fight against litter. Many local authorities in Scotland are doing a grand job. Others can perhaps do more, as some members mentioned, and I hope uh, they do that. There are, of course, other issues. This is not just about bottles and cans and fag packets, as some members mentioned. I think Jackie Bailey mentioned the issue of dog fouling, which, of course, again is a blight on some of our communities. Again, local authorities have powers to deal with that, and I would urge those that perhaps are not using existing legislation to f explore whether there's more they can do to, to address that issue with the existing fines that are available. Yep. Jackie Bailey. Um, can, can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for taking an intervention? We've exchanged correspondence, and my understanding was the legislation didn't cover farmland because it was private land, and there was concern about the scope of local authorities to be able to enforce. I wonder if there isn't something clever we could do to try and help farmers with this problem. Uh, yes, I was clearly referring to dog fouling generally, but in terms of farmland, I take the point that perhaps we should be exploring uh, if there's more we, we can do, and I'll have a look at that. Uh, however, I do hope that local authorities can use existing fines that are available, but it was part of the responsible dog ownership consultation that took place recently. We're currently considering the responses to that consultation, uh, and dog fouling was part of that. One of the clear messages that came across was that uh, there's more that needs to be done at local level with existing legislation. Yeah. Mr. McGregor? I, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for taking the intervention. Um, it, should organisations or councils wish to put out or give out uh, plastic bags to dog owners uh, to, if, to pick up the um, excrement, uh, will the 5p tax be charged on, on those plastic bags? <laughs> well, can I just make the obvious point that responsible dog ownership means that you get your own bags and you look after your own dogs uh, fouling on our streets and communities in Scotland. And what I do find appalling is how nowadays when we go out into the countryside we find little doggy bags on the, the posts of fences. Uh, they should be taken home and disposed of uh, appropriately by dog owners. I hope um, that message gets across in the future as well. One other issue which we do also agree on is that the total cost is unacceptable to society of, of littering. As many members have said, it's £78 million pounds a year. At least £53 million pounds of this is direct clear-up costs and a further £25 million through its effect on a range of other issues such as crime, health and reduced property values as well. And over and above that, there's a further cost to the marine environment of £16.8 million each and every year as well. And of course, that in turn impacts on our environment, wildlife, industry and tourism. And as Jamie McGregor said, marine litter is not just about the impact on marine wildlife, it's also a significant issue for the fishing industry. 
and vessels participating in the Fishing for Litter initiative landed over 374 tonnes of litter between 2011 and 2014, and it is estimated that the problem costs every vessel in the Scottish fleet as much as £17,000 annually, which is quite considerable. And of course, all of that cash could be spent on better things, especially when you consider that discarded plastic bottles we see or aluminium cans and other materials are said to be worth an estimated £1.2 million when recycled. So if we actually reuse the resources that are dumped on our pavements and our communities or at sea, we could get millions of pounds back from the value of these valuable materials. So in addressing this litter problem, the National Litter Strategy and the Marine Litter Counterpart, which we launched last summer, it also seeks to boost our economy. The priority, of course, remains prevention, and it provides a focus to strategy for all of us to take responsibility over the next four years, and that is being supported by our delivery partner, Zero Waste Scotland. And Zero Waste Scotland has already made half a million pounds available to keep Scotland beautiful's uh, Clean Up Scotland campaign, and Keep Scotland Beautiful, of course, have many, many challenges to deal with. Uh, not least cleaning up the, the mess left by litter louts in Scotland, but it's of course quite rightly relying on local action taken by individuals, groups and businesses and councils. And I am particularly pleased that Clean Up Scotland is celebrating local champions, like for instance young Brona Dallas from Elgin uh, in my own constituency who picks up litter every day on her way home from school or to school. And indeed, the Northern Scot reported that the first thing she does when she gets home, before she does her homework, is to go on a litter pick on the streets around her home. And it goes on to say the article in the Northern Scot, and she even drags her mum and other family members out on litter picks after school and at weekends. So Brona, of course, is an inspiration to her generation and indeed to the rest of us in Scotland and is a worthy local champion, as indeed are the many members mentioned, uh, or the many people mentioned by other members in the chamber today. I should also mention Pete Miners in my constituency who patrols the river Lossie and has done for many, many years picking up marine litter. And he puts on Facebook the pictures of what he finds and it is absolutely phenomenal the piles of marine litter and other litter that he collects on his uh, daily walks along the River Lossie banks. So, with around half a million volunteer cleanups taking place across Scotland, tens of thousands of tonnes of litter have been removed. So, we owe a huge debt to the many hundreds of thousands of volunteers uh, across Scotland. That's a great achievement, but we still have a situation where one in five adults admit to littering, and therefore the problem does persist. So we have to also remember that Keep Scotland Beautiful and our local authorities are not the only organisations with interests and responsibilities in this area. This is something we all have to be part of, organisations, individuals and indeed the private sector uh, as well. And I recently visited a McDonald's restaurant uh, in Elgin where of course they undertake some activities around the restaurant and the neighbouring streets to collect litter. And it's really important that our private sector continue to play their part as well. In summary, the strategy the government launched has really three routes for dealing with the problem of litter in Scotland. Firstly, communication, highlighting what to do and explaining, of course, that litter is unacceptable. Secondly, making sure the appropriate infrastructure is available for people to deposit their litter. And thirdly, enforcement as a deterrent to make people stop and think. We have already introduced higher fixed penalties, £80 for littering, £200 for fly tipping to strengthen the deterrent. We have, of course, got the carrier bag charge in place now, which should hopefully keep um, bags from being discarded in our streets because people will be using bags for life and there will be less bags circulating in our society, hopefully. Uh, and, of course, we had the national marketing campaign in 2014 as well, and there's ongoing communications to keep this issue in the public eye. And finally, we're rolling out recycle on the go points across some of Scotland's most busiest places. So to sum up, I welcome this debate. It's a really important issue for Scotland. I hope we continue to work and collaborate across society to make this socially unacceptable, as many members have said. It is socially unacceptable. It is a vandalism in Scotland's environment and Scotland's communities. We have to deal with it. So let's please keep working together, as Bruce Crawford says, and keep Scotland beautiful. Thank you. Well done. Many thanks. And I now close this meeting of Parliament.